stand on your feet this morning? Yes, and you can give God praise right there. Come on, you can do better for the God who loves you, who cares for you. Come on, he deserves a glorious shout. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory. Yes. This morning I want to read a scripture, and it's 1 Chronicles 16, 8, 9. And it says this, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Watch this. Verse 9 says, and sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Watch this. Talk of all his wondrous works. I'm reminded of this, that your worship and your praise should be a response to God's wondrous works. And oftentimes when we have a praiseless people, it's because we have a people that has forgotten about what he's done for them. But I know that in this house, we got some people that remember the good things that God has already done. For the fact that he died on the cross for my sin, that's enough to praise him right there. For the fact that he rose me from my pit and from my misery, that's enough to praise him. For the fact that he rose me out of my depression and out of my shame and out of my unforgiveness and out of my addictions, that's enough to give him a praise. And I wish somebody would just remember the great things that God has already done. For he is worthy of the praise. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. He is worthy of your hallelujah. He is worthy of your glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. So, Father, we bless you this morning, and we thank you for your wondrous deeds. We thank you for your mighty works. We thank you for the fact that you have died for our sins, and you have given us access to this grace, God, that you've given us grace, Lord, that gives us access to all of the heavenly places, God, for you have declared that we are seated in heavenly places, God. You have adopted us into your kingdom. God, you have given us forgiveness. Father, you have given us your mercy. And so because of it, God, we say you deserve a glorious shout. God, we say that you deserve a glorious hallelujah. Father, we say that you deserve our thank you. We deserve, you deserve our honor. God, you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. Father, you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. And Father, we'll be grateful. And we'll be grateful for all that you've done. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the praise and all the glory. And it's in your precious name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah.
worship deeper than before.
by a stride. Here we are healed yeah. by his nail pierced hands. We're free by his blood. We're washed clean. Now we have the victory. Said the power of sin. Say he has won it all. He has won it all. It all. Sing hallelujah. You have won the victory. Father, we bless you. Say, sing hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Yeah. Sing death could not hold. Father, we feel you in this place you are. Yeah. And you're seated in majesty. Yeah. You are the reason. Say it again. So death could not hold. Say so you are the reason. Yeah, you're seated in majesty. Yeah, you are the reason. Our God has risen. Say he's alive. He's alive. Say my God is risen. He's not dead, he's alive. He's won the victory. He reigns. Say my God has risen. He's not dead, he's alive. Say, death could not hold. 
you declare it, if you declare it, say, Dad could not hold. Come on, no music. Say, Dad could not hold. Dad could not hold. Dad could not hold you down. Yeah. Since Dad could not hold. Dad could not hold you down. Yeah. Dad could not hold. Dad could not hold you down. One more time. One more time. Give God a shout of praise all over this place. Father, you're worthy. Father, we declare that you're glorious. Father, we bless your name this morning. Father, we say you're awesome. You're worthy. We bless your name right there, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. So death could not hold you down. No, no, you are the reason. You're seated in majesty. You are the risen King. One more time, say hallelujah all over this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've won it all. Everything that I need, he's won it for me. Say hallelujah. Last time, say, say, hallelujah. You want it all. Father, we bless your name. Say, hallelujah.
to our left and our right, Father God, that are temporary. We go in faith, trusting you to complete the work that you started in us. Have your way in our lives, God. You be glorified on today, God. Lord, we lift this service up to you. We thank you now, Father, for the word of God that will go forth. God, I thank you that the people of God grab hold of it, run with the vision, are obedient to your call, Father. That we lay aside every single weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And we run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Have your way in our lives. You be glorified, O oh God. And it's in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands. Registration is registration is $20 for this course, and it includes course materials and books. The next course that you're that Hope is presenting is the 21-day financial fast. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, for this course, you want to discover the practical ways to achieve financial freedom. Freedom. And the, and the prosperity that it has. So this is also a four-week class to help you better manage your money. Registration for this course is only $10, and it also includes course material and books. So you can sign up online today at thecityonline.org, um, and registration will actually end on June 25th, so Sunday, June 25th, because the classes will begin on Tuesday, June 27th. We'll be taking a week off to celebrate uh, 4th of July, and then we'll resume classes again on July 11th until July 25th. So make sure that you register online today, okay? Next, Proximo. Kohai is currently seeking a grant writer to fill an upcoming important position in one of our ministries. So if that's you, if you have that experience or somebody that you know, please make sure to contact the church office by dialing 649-266-2626. Lastly, ultimamente, remember to check out the website at www.thecityonline.org for all the events and details here at the city. These have been our announcements, Kohai. Gloria y honor a ti. Please join me in welcoming the female pastor, Pastor Parker, to the stage. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, somebody in here. Woo, my goodness. So this is a time of the year that's really exciting for some of our partners, our young partners, our little partners. This is the end of school year. So they have promoted, yes, they promoted... Some of them have graduated kindergarten, going to first grade. They're promoting from elementary to middle school. Then we have our high schoolers who are graduating and our college students. So it's a wonderful ministry that we have with our student ministries. We service 18 months all the way to about 25, 30 with our driven ministries. That's our college age students. And as the associate pastor that oversees them, I'm just honored to be able to recognize today our high school and our college graduates that are part of our student ministries, our Hope Road, and also our Driven Ministries. Amen. They have, some of them have already walked the stage the last couple of days this week. A few of them are going to be graduating on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, and they're all over the city of San Diego. Not just Lincoln, they're in El Cajon, they're in Eastlake, they're in Temecula. They are all over. 
And one thing that I'm really impressed by this class is that not only have they been active here in the ministry, but they have been active on their campuses. They have been rewarded for their accomplishments um, as citizenships. We have one who has just been a leader on her campus at Lincoln, who has overcome so much to be where she's at today. And I'm honored to bring them forward, all of them. So as I call your name, would you please come and meet me at the stage, okay? So we have Serena Pendleton. <clears throat> she has graduated already and she is going to be attending Spelman College. I remember when this this one was a little little bitty thing. She's part of the Faith Chapel and I used to come hang out at Faith Chapel every now and then. But um, she grew up here in this church. She's um, a wonderful young lady who has served in the ministry as well. She works in our toddler room and our city kids, and she helps with the kids. We also have Elijah Davis. Oh, big O. He is graduating with a 3.3 grade point average. And he is also, he's decided that he's going to go to Miramar College. All right. Caleb Corliss. This is Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> this is our chef, too. This is Chef Caleb. And Caleb, Caleb grew up with us over in the warehouse. When Caleb started coming around, we were over in, in Mission Valley. And he has grown up here at the ministry. We're so excited for him. We also have, and this is a new kid on the block. She's been a um, part of the ministry for such a short time, but we've just enjoyed her. Um, Isoria Thompson. She's graduating from a school in Temecula, so they come all the way up here to be a part of the ministry. One thing I forgot about Caleb, Caleb has decided to go to Johnson & Wells University in Charlotte, North Carolina. Ezreela is has not decided yet, but maybe Cal State San Marcos or Miracosta. Amen. And then we have Treasure McKinley. This is my wild card right here. Treasure has been a leader on her campus at Lincoln High School. She has led that school in socialism, activism. She has been the voice of their senior class. She has. She received a number of schools that wanted her, and she had to decide which one she wanted to go to. And she has decided to go to West. Oh, you switched. She switched again. Tell us now which one you're going to. Okay, so the school I'm going to now is UC Santa Cruz. Right. <laughs> Yay! Praise the Lord. So these are our high school graduates. We do have two uh, graduates from college that are part of our driven ministry. One is, is out of town. She's actually vacating right now for her graduation with her family, and that's Sequoia. She's the daughter of uh, uh, Kevin and Deborah Shirley. She's a part of our driven ministry. Not only driven ministry, but she is a teacher. She supports our student ministry. She serves faithfully, and she has she is graduating with her master's degree from National University. But one of our other college graduates. My Andrea Robbins. She has graduated from college with a Bachelor's of Arts in English from San Diego Christian College. She is faithful, faithful, faithful. She serves in the children's ministry, like all of them serve in the children's ministry. They've all served, they've been a part of different productions, and I'm so I'm so excited for their lives. I'm excited. So, family, help me welcome. We do have gifts for them. We can give them their gifts. Come on, let them hear it. So you see all these people out here, you guys? This is your support. We're going to be praying for you. 
We're going to be sending you cards and packages. I promise we're going to do it this year, and we're going to do it right. We're going to make sure that you get what you need while you're gone. But we just want to recognize you. We know your schools have recognized you. We know that your families have, but we're part of your family. And we did not want to miss this opportunity to say congratulations. Congratulations on this major accomplishment. Amen. So as you go to your campuses, continue to be you. Because you are great. In all of your awesomeness and your uniqueness, you are awesome. And go to your campuses. Go to the next phase of your life, your career. And you go taking the mantle that Jesus loves you, that I'm saved, and I'm walking in my purpose. So do you and do it God's way. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes. Amen. Clap those hands again and celebrate the Lord in this house. Come on, everybody in the building. Everybody, 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 everybody. Come on, come on. Clap those hands and celebrate God. You can't celebrate it with your mouth closed. I see your hands clapping, but your mouths ain't saying nothing. Come on, I need you to celebrate God. Celebrate God. Before you take your seat, hop, pop, somebody tell them God's been real good to me. Come on, I need to look on the other side and tell somebody God's been real good to me. Now turn behind you, how about somebody else and tell them God's been real, real good to me. If you knew it's only been God that's been bringing you these last six months, I need you to really look at somebody and say, God's been real good to me. You mean to tell me after all that, you still in your right mind? That you still got activity of your limbs? I need you to push somebody, tell them God's been real good, real good, real good. If you ain't never seen a miracle, you see one with me, baby, because I'm a walking to hit somebody say, real good, real good, real good, real. I don't know why, but I feel it in my spirit. Push somebody say, real good, real good. Oh, my God. Ain't he good? Amen to God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Tell somebody I came to lift him up. Can I get somebody to help me? Tell somebody I came to lift him up. Because I refuse to come in here and leave the same way that I came. God done did too much for me to come in here and cross my legs and fold my arms and act like I got it all together. But had it not been for the goodness of the Lord, I would have lost my hit somebody say he's been real good to me. Yes, sir. I'm just happy in Jesus. Amen. We honor the Lord on today for truly the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth to all generations. Tell somebody God is so wonderful. He's been making ways and opening doors and he has been being God. And he's just good at being God. Somebody say amen. It is, we welcome you here to the City of Hope International Church, but we are a church that believes in lifting up the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to tell you right now that you're in the right place at the right time to get just what you need from the Lord. And the Lord has something special for you on today. So get yourselves ready. Back in the day, they said you got to buckle up your spiritual seatbelt because God's about to take you on a journey that you will not believe. Somebody say amen. It is seed sowing time, offering time in the house. Somebody celebrate God. Amen. We want you to get your tithe and get your offering together. Get something that you can bless God with. The psalmist says, how much shall I render for all of your many benefits unto me? I don't have enough sustenance to give God back for how good God's been to me. So we want to take what little meager resources that we have and show God that we appreciate all that he has done and all that he is doing. Somebody say amen. 
So if women get your gifts, get your love gifts, get your time, get your offering, get something that we can bless the Lord with. Everybody gets something, something in the house. It is because of your faithfulness and your sowing that we're able to make an impact not only in our community, but in our local church and in this great state of California. It's because of your support. It's because of what you do that helps us to do what we need to do. So give yourselves a hand on this morning. We couldn't do this without you. And we need your help. That's why we ask that you partner with us to make a difference. Partner with us to make an impact. Partner with us to change the dynamics of this community. And we do that together. We do it together. Tell somebody we do it together. We do it together. We do it together. Now, back in the day, they say that if you have something to give, look over at your neighbor. And if they don't have nothing to give, put something in their hands so they can give. Because we all got to give. Tell somebody we all got to give. We all got to give. We all got to give. Put something in their hands and we're going to give together because we're all going to reap the benefits of our sowing. Amen. If God can do nothing else, he can honor his word. He will honor his word. He said he'll return it 60, 90, 100 fold. And that he gives seed to the sower. And he honors his word. Somebody say amen again. So if you have that gift, rise up all over the house. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We're happy because we're sowing into our destiny. We're sowing into our ministry. We're sowing into our families. We're about to sow and make an impact in our lives. Amen. Rise up everybody that's physically able to rise on your feet. Amen. With those gifts lifted to the Lord and saying a giving declaration that I'm a tither and a giver. I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. And I'm living in my overflow. Say it again that I'm a tither and a giver. I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. And I'm living in my overflow. Now, God, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for those that had a heart, mind, and spirit to give, God. We thank you for those that wanted to but didn't have it. We pray that you give it to them so they can uh, next time. God, those that are trusting you today with their sacrifice, God, we pray that you multiply, that you expand it, God, that you enlarge their territory, expand their coast, do something miraculous in their lives that only you can. We believe it done in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You're under the direction of our ministry technicians. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Okay. 
Back in the day, they had an old song that says that God can't use you sitting down. Get up from there from sitting down. I think this morning at the 8 o'clock service, that song was disproved because there was a young man in the house that preached his heart out while sitting down. Yeah. While sitting down. If you have never experienced the ministry of Bishop Terrell Fletcher, you are in for a treat. But there is a word directly from the throne room of heaven that is coming down to the earth to bless your soul. For God reveals himself in the explanation of his word. And the more of his word is revealed, the more we understand the nature and the power of God. So if you're not ready, get your mind right. Get your spirit right. Because you're about to be illuminated as this man takes this sacred test to bring forth the word of God. So if you would, my dear brother and my dear sister, rise all over the house, put your hands together, and celebrate God's man of action, Bishop Terrell Fletcher. yourself as victorious, then you'd act like a victor. And if you'd act like a victor, the devil will struggle in fighting you because it will remind him that all of his devices aren't working. And even he stops when he fails. So Father, in Jesus' name, the hands I hold, I give you praise for. I don't have to know who, I don't have to know what, I don't have to know why. But I thank you for these hands. They made it to this point today. And I give you praise because they can make it. And if they're here able to hold me up, hold, if they're here and I'm able to hold them up, then they are capable and competent of holding me up. So Father, I thank you for the hands that I'm holding now. I pray over everything that is entrusted into them. I pray over their families. I pray over their relationships. I pray over their finances. I pray over their hurts and their harms. I pray, God, that you remind them that they have victory in the middle of all the stuff they're going through. And we give you praise for them now in the name of Jesus. I've just found it in my spirit to thank you for the hand that I'm holding. I've just found it in my heart to give you glory for the hand that I'm holding. They should not be the only ones celebrating what you've done in their life. So God, we have come together to celebrate what you're doing in the life of my brother and in my sister now in the name of Jesus. I bless you, God, for the hands that I'm touching. And Lord, we extend our prayers out to our broken, to our sick, to our shut-in. We extend our prayers out to Brother Will, who had a heart attack a few days ago. He is going one level to another level and God you're still with him in April and we thank you now and we thank you for everyone that's in this building your name be praised in Jesus glorious name somebody shout amen give God a hand praise now look at somebody real quick love thank you thank you give God a hand praise and love on somebody real quickly love on somebody smile at him and say it's just church you're just at church it's okay you're at church it's okay. And I want you to grab your Bibles. Go with me to Philippians chapter 2 and rise up all over the building if you possibly can uh, as we read the Word of God together. We stand for the reading of the Word of God here at the City of Hope. I want to make sure that I honor 
and thank God for all the volunteers that, uh, that made yesterday's cookout happen. God bless you. God bless you. What a good day. Uh, for the short time I was able to, st to be there, uh, I had a, an amazing time until we lost in spades. And uh, when we, the Lord was really blessing until that happened. And, and, and me and Brother Saul didn't really understand how it happened because we put our best cheating on and couldn't understand they won through us cheating. So, and maybe that was God's, uh, God's, God's uh, hand reminding us that maybe we shouldn't do that next time. But Sister Verena and Sister Sherry came through the fire to get that victory yesterday. And I can't note how hard I rooted against them in the next round. Uh, <laughs> I laid hands on who they was trying to play. I was like, let God use you. <laughs> and we give God. I'm thankful that I go to a church where we can play spades. Amen? Amen. I grew up in the sanctified, sanctified, sanctified church. Everything was a sin. We didn't even play Mon Anybody know what I'm talking about? We didn't even play Monopoly because they had dice. Yeah, uh huh. Y'all didn't grow up like that. I mean, anybody know what I'm talking about by myself? I'm trying to tell you. Sanctified, sanctified, sanctified. We went to bed repenting because we didn't want to have a thought at night that God might come in the middle of the night and you had a day. Y'all ain't talking back to me. If I, I know I'm not the only one who grew up like, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And that's how we got filled with the Holy Ghost. We just said, thank you, Jesus, until, until the tongue and the mind couldn't work together and it sounded like a tongue. You know, that's just, so I thank God for that. We had a great time. Domino, who won the Domino's tournament? We didn't have the Domino? Okay, all right. So it was good, and uh, what a great, I just, I just thank God for the family that I can have fun. We had so much fun. I kind of felt like we should turn off the gospel music and put on Frankie Beverly and Mays. You know, that's kind of, I wasn't, I wasn't real sure. But I'm glad we didn't because I got, I got grown folks at the church. And... <laughs> And Frankie, Beverly, and Mays automatically equal those little, the red cups. <laughs> Some of y'all way too safe today. Yo, anybody know what I'm talking about, though? You know, it's like, hey, 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 this is the church picnic now. Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> those little red cups start coming out. Kids got to go to bed. Go play, go play, go play, go play. Get out of here, go play. <laughs> I'm just so excited to be back after two months of being away. I give God the praise. So thank you all so much that um, for those with the with the barbecue cookout and, and, and whatnot, and, uh, and all of, also to our graduates. We are so proud of you all. <clears throat> yeah, we're so proud of you, and, and we we recognize that there are others that have graduated, but we're we're, great, we're very grateful for for you all. We're so proud because we get to watch some of these young men and young women. They're like handsome and beautiful people as well, not just on the outside, but on the inside, and to watch our young babies run up to them and high-five them, and watch, like, that's so amazing, so we, we, so we acknowledge you, young men and women, uh, for your accomplishments, but for a few seconds, let's acknowledge the people that made them, let's give God a hand praise for the mom and the dad and the, the village that helped make these amazing amazing individuals now parents you're not off duty because you're the one that messed around and made them want to go to college so you got four more years to stay on duty five at least four and a half five years to stay on duty you made them great now you got to hang in there and get them out of college now amen with a degree amen and we thank God for that. I'm so excited to see what they're going to do. Do you have Philippians chapter 2? If you got it, shout, I got it. All right, Philippians chapter 2. Wanted to give you some time to find that. That's not the easiest book in the Bible to find. Uh, <clears throat> I'm reading from the New King James. Uh, we'll start at verse 3, and we will read through verse 6. And it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. 
let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal. Somebody shout equal. Equal with God. Equal with God. Equal with God. We're doing a, we're doing a new series called In Sync. And this is part one. And I want you to look at someone and say, the relationship. The relationship. Now find, yeah, the relationship. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the next few moments. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Uh, and we ask that you would speak life with clarity and with power, with profundity that changes the way we think, the way we operate, the way we function in this world so that you would get glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Smile at somebody on your seat. If you're one of the volunteers that we asked to help out, would you come to the stage real quick? Real quick. We have a handful of volunteers that I will give God a hand praise for these, these handsome volunteers that are coming to the stage. Real quick. Real quick. I need two, I need two on this side. I only not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You was here for first service. You can't, you can't do it again, son. It doesn't work like that. Uh, go, here's what this, I'm going to give these two guys an assignment. Right behind you, there are puzzles. It's split up two and two. Right behind you, there's a puzzle. And I'm going to talk to the audience and to the people on television. I'm going to give you guys about a minute to put that puzzle together. Ready? Go. So that, um, we, we're going to talk about being in sync. Somebody shout in sync. All right, so the, the context of this entire uh, uh, series has to do with finding rhythm with, with God and with family. So it is how do we get in sync with God and in sync with family. And uh, uh, I'm going to be sitting and standing. Some of you know I had surgery not too long ago on my, on my Achilles tendon. So if it doesn't bother you that I sit down to teach, then we'll be okay today. Is that fair? All right. So... Uh, we want to speak about having, uh, being in sync with God and in sync with family, in sync with all the things that matter. Somebody shout in sync. In sync. All right? It's important that we understand what we're talking about, first of all, when we talk about being in sync. Secondly, when we talk about relationships. All right? first th the first thing about in sync is that uh, what it means to be in sync is to cause to operate at the same time or the same rate. It, this is what it means to synchronize. It means to cause to operate at the same time or the same rate. Right? So this is, this is critical. So what we're now about to talk about is we're talking about getting our life in the sa at the same pace or at the same rate and in the same timing in which God operates in. Is there anybody that feel like they're a little bit out of, t out of time, out of sync, out of rhythm with God, out of sync, saved but out of rhythm? Born again, blood washed, but, but it seems like every time you have problems, resources are not in sync with your problems. Are you hearing me? Uh, 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 you know, you got questions and answers are not in sync with your questions. It would just be good from time to time to have life that literally is in sync. Clock, stop, 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 stop. But guys, stop, guys, stop. Clock, 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 clock. All right? Now, stay, stay with me. You guys can move forward real quick. So, uh, let me put a parenthetic pause in my preaching. Are you guys finished? Are you finished? All right. What would have helped you finish? More time. More time. What would have helped you finish? A picture of the, po okay. I want you to understand what just took place. I just asked them to, pre to perform something, and they are trying to build a puzzle, and they don't even know what they're building. He just said, we needed a picture of the puzzle. If we would have had a picture of the puzzle, then maybe we could have made our time. The reality of what the Bible teaches is that for every season, there's a time. So there is a time limit associated to every season of your life. And God requires us to build something. Somebody shall build something. Your life is not just about existing. It's about producing. And God is interested in you producing something out of your life, but you don't have all day to do it. God wants you to produce something out of your life, but you don't have all your life to produce it. 
Your life is consistent of seasons, moments in time, and God doesn't operate by time. He operates by seasons. So he expects you to have certain levels of production in certain seasons of your life, even though it's locked in time. He asked for more time. They didn't know what they were building, and I could have given him as much time as he wanted. If he doesn't know what he's building, he's going to fall short of my expectation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How, how many of us are trying to get in sync to please the creator or the progenerator of ideas? You're trying to please me, trying to please God, but you don't really know what you're building. I'm trying to be a good man, but I've never seen the picture of a good man. I'm trying to be a productive wife, but I've never seen a good wife. I'm trying to build a life that pleases God, but and I've got pieces to my puzzle, but I don't really know what to do with them because I don't have models. All right. Go ahead, guys. Go finish the puzzle. Go finish. Take as much time as you need. Yeah. Time. Time. Take as much time as you need. So it is critical that when we talk about being in sync, that we realize that even though, even though you have time, when it comes to God, it's all about timing. Amen. There are things 